Now I want you to tell me your gut reaction to this picture I'm gonna show you. Don't think about it, just look at it and tell me what you see. What I see is four runways that are arranged in the four directions and it looks like a swastika. Right. It's only a matter of time before a catastrophic event occurs, something that could wipe out a significant portion of the Earth's population and force humanity to start anew. Perhaps one of the 30,000 near-Earth objects monitored by NASA will finally collide with our planet, triggering an extinction event reminiscent of the one that eliminated the dinosaurs. Alternatively, we could see a shift in Earth's magnetic poles, exposing the planet to the devastating radiation of the sun. Or imagine a dictator, on their deathbed, deciding to leave a legacy of destruction by launching their entire nuclear arsenal. The reality is, it's just a matter of time before one of these or any number of other doomsday scenarios unfolds. When that time comes, world leaders, such as the President and Vice President of the United States, will be swiftly relocated to underground facilities designed for such emergencies. Key members of Congress and military leaders will also be escorted to secure locations. But what about civilians? There are indeed facilities scattered around the globe, constructed to shelter thousands of people. The pressing questions arise. Who gets saved while the rest of us are left behind? Who is responsible for making that decision? And where exactly are these facilities located? While I can't say for certain where VIPs would go if they were in Europe, Asia, or Australia, I can tell you that in the United States, those select few are directed to Denver. The mystery surrounding the Denver International Airport began even before its construction. Shrouded in conspiracy theories and speculation, the airport has been the center of numerous discussions about its hidden purposes and alleged underground facilities. Many believe it serves as a hub for the elite during catastrophic events, raising questions about what truly lies beneath its surface. The decision to build a new airport in Denver was puzzling, especially since the city didn't really need one and couldn't afford it. Stapleton Airport was conveniently located and capable of handling the existing traffic. In fact, in the early 1990s, Stapleton Airport underwent an expansion to accommodate more travelers. Despite this, authorities decided to decommission Stapleton and construct a brand new airport 25 miles outside the city, situated in a remote area with only one road in and out. Plans were developed, bids were submitted and contractors were hired. But this is where the complications began. When Denver International Airport, DIA, finally opened on February 28, 1995, it was 16 months behind schedule and a staggering $2 billion over budget. The final cost of the airport soared to $4.8 billion, nearly double the original estimate. Covering a sprawling 53-square-mile complex, DIA is almost twice the size of Manhattan and significantly larger than the next biggest U.S. airport, despite being only the 20th busiest airport in the country at that time. Such extensive construction and expenditure seem excessive unless the project entailed more than just an airport. This led to growing curiosity and suspicion about DIA. Observations began to accumulate, revealing discrepancies that didn't quite add up. Construction workers themselves expressed confusion over the project's management. Contractors were hired, fired, and rehired without clear explanations. While teams had specific tasks, very few individuals possessed a comprehensive understanding of the entire project scope. Beneath the airport, a complex network of tunnels was constructed. Officially reported as having six levels. Some workers claimed there were even more levels, though no one could confirm the exact depth. This secrecy and lack of transparency fueled speculation about what exactly lay hidden beneath the surface of Denver International Airport. A staggering 5,300 miles of fiber optics were installed at Denver International Airport for communication, enough cable to stretch from New York to Los Angeles and back. Additionally, a fueling system was constructed capable of pumping 1,000 gallons of jet fuel per minute, 
an excessive capacity for a commercial airport. Runway 16R-34L, nearly 3 miles long, is the longest runway in the country, which also seems excessive for typical commercial operations unless there are plans to accommodate significantly larger aircraft and a high volume of air traffic. While most airports are surrounded by barbed wire with the barbs facing outward to deter intruders, Denver Airport features the barbed wire positioned incorrectly, facing inward, which appears to be designed to keep people inside rather than out. Furthermore, five large buildings were constructed and subsequently buried after completion, with the official explanation being that they were built in the wrong location. These structures tower between 7 and 15 stories tall. Instead of demolishing them, they were simply covered up, raising further suspicions. Adding to the mystery is a 40-foot-wide tunnel that connects these buried buildings to the rest of the airport complex. The construction project involved moving an astonishing 110 million cubic yards of earth, far exceeding what would typically be required for an underground airport facility. For context, this volume is about one-tenth of the earth moved to excavate the entire Panama Canal. Such figures led many to speculate that the construction could accommodate a tunnel leading to another facility, like the Cheyenne Mountain Complex near Colorado Springs. This facility serves as a major command and control center for the U.S. military in the event of a nuclear war. Numerous other construction anomalies were observed by workers throughout the project, but without sufficient information, they struggled to piece together a coherent narrative. As various segments of the airport were completed, a sense of something sinister began to emerge, fueling conspiracy theories and speculation about the true purpose behind the massive underground infrastructure being built at Denver International Airport. For instance, when the runways were completed, observers noted that from the air, they formed the shape of a swastika. This raised concerns among locals, who began to suspect that Denver International Airport might be more than just a typical airport. Upon its opening, many began searching for clues that could suggest it was constructed by a secretive group with a hidden agenda. These clues seemed to be everywhere. Upon arriving at the airport, the first thing visitors encounter, before even entering the building, is the Blue Mustang a striking 32-foot-tall statue weighing 9,000 pounds, complete with visible red veins and glowing red eyes. Some people interpret this statue as a representation of the fourth horse of the apocalypse, and it soon earned the nicknames Blucifer, with some believing it to be cursed. The backstory adds to its eerie reputation. The artist, Luis Jimenez, tragically died in a freak accident when a piece of the horse fell off and severed an artery in his leg. Inside the airport, the unsettling artwork continues. Denver might be the only airport in the world that features gargoyles in the baggage claim area. According to the artist Terry Allen, they are meant to serve as protectors. Historically, gargoyles were placed on buildings to ward off evil spirits, but their presence in an airport raises eyebrows. Even more disturbing are the murals that adorn the airport's walls. One prominent piece, titled Peace and Harmony with Nature by artist Leo Tanguma, features unsettling imagery, children in coffins, extinct animals, a forest ablaze in the background, and a city in flames. A child depicted in the mural holds a Mayan tablet that ominously suggests an impending apocalypse. Such themes are far from comforting for nervous flyers waiting for their connecting flights. Additionally, references to Nazi Germany can be found throughout the airport, further fueling speculation and conspiracy theories about the true purpose behind Denver International Airport. The combination of these elements creates an atmosphere filled with intrigue and foreboding, leading many to question what really lies beneath the surface of this seemingly ordinary airport. The mural in question depicts a chilling scene. A Nazi figure wearing a gas mask, armed with a rifle and wielding a sword, cutting through a city. At the end of his sword lies a dead dog, symbolizing the death of peace. To the left, children are seen lying amidst the rubble, while citizens flee in terror. A mother is depicted weeping as she cradles the lifeless body of her child. 
In the lower right corner, a haunting poem is inscribed, written by a child who perished in a Nazi concentration camp. To be fair, there is a second half to this mural that presents a contrasting image. Here, children from various cultures around the world are shown carrying weapons and flags, offering them to a little German boy positioned at the center. This imagery suggests that all these countries are disarming and surrendering their flags to this blonde-haired, blue-eyed child. The implications are troubling, and many viewers are left questioning the message being conveyed. Is this depiction indicative of a one-world government or a new world order? Many skeptics certainly think so. As discontent grew, people began searching for clues about the true forces behind the airport project. One particularly glaring clue is the airport's dedication plaque, prominently featuring the Freemasons. The Masons were involved in the airport's dedication, but what raises eyebrows is the name listed beneath the date. New World Airport Commission. For those already wary of a shadow government pushing for a new world order, this connection feels particularly unsettling. The New World Airport Commission was not widely known, leading to questions about its purpose and its ties to the Freemasons. Most importantly, who was behind this mysterious organization? Concerned citizens began investigating only to discover that the New World Airport Commission appears to be a phantom entity, doesn't exist. Throughout history, there have always been figures seeking to exert control over civilizations. From Julius Caesar and Alexander the Great to Attila the Hun, Napoleon, and Hitler, these dictators ruled through tyranny, crushing dissent and instilling fear. This historical context adds a layer of foreboding to the speculation surrounding the airport, as many wonder if the same patterns of control are resurfacing in modern times through seemingly innocuous projects like Denver International Airport. The layers of symbolism and hidden meanings lead to a growing sense of unease about what the future may hold. The individuals believed to be behind the New World Order are not known for operating in the open. Rather, they work in the shadows, manipulating the world's leaders from behind the scenes. Historically, this group has been linked to various secret societies, including the Templar Knights during the Middle Ages. In the late 18th century, the Order of the Illuminati emerged as another well-known secret society. Numerous other organizations have been rumored to play a role in this supposed ruling elite, but none are more frequently associated with the New World Order than the Freemasons. The Freemasons project an outward image of piety and charitable work, but many claim they harbor a hidden political agenda aimed at establishing a one-world government governed exclusively by Masons. Their symbols can be found throughout society. For instance, the Masonic Eye of Providence appears on U.S. currency, and the compass and square are displayed on the capstone at Denver International Airport. Interestingly, although the airport officially opened on February 28, 1995, the capstone was placed on March 19, 1994. Adding the numbers 3, 19, and 1994 together yields the number 33, a significant figure in Freemasonry, representing the highest degree a Mason can achieve. This number seems to pop up frequently in various contexts. As for the controversial mural featuring the Nazi figure, it includes a sword that looks quite unusual for a soldier, unless one is familiar with the ancient Arabic order known as the Nobles of the Mystic Shrine, commonly referred to as the Shriners, which is a Masonic order. The symbolism runs deep, as evidenced by the gargoyles in the baggage claim area, which appear to emerge from Samsonite suitcases. Notably, Samsonite is an anagram for Mason's site, further adding to the web of connections. The location of the capstone is significant as it rests in the Great Hall of the airport, a term Masons use to describe their meeting rooms. There are numerous suspicions surrounding the capstone itself, it is also said to function as a time capsule, scheduled to be opened in the year 2094. The contents of this time capsule remain a topic of speculation, with some suggesting it contains gas masks and MREs, meals ready to eat. While others theorize it might harbor something more sinister, like a bomb. 
These myriad clues and connections have led many to believe that Denver International Airport is not just an airport, but potentially a facade for something much larger and more ominous. A focal point for those rumored to be orchestrating a new world order. Some believe that the time capsule at Denver International Airport may serve as an entrance to a hidden underground bunker, accessible by interacting with the Braille plaque in a specific manner, almost like a keypad. There have even been reports of Masons passing through the airport, holding their membership cards next to the plaque to see if it triggers any secret mechanism. Officially, the contents of the time capsule are said to include a newspaper, baseballs from Coors Field, coins from the Denver Mint, and a pair of sneakers belonging to Mayor Wellington, who, interestingly, was also a Mason. A significant aspect of the New World Order agenda is the idea of population reduction. The question arises, how exactly do they plan to achieve this? Many theorists suggest that the answer lies right beneath our feet. The identities of those behind the New World Order remain shrouded in mystery. It's true that while Stapleton Airport was convenient due to its downtown location, it was also congested and inefficient, which made it less than ideal for those living and working in the area. Airports can be noisy, and this is precisely why Denver International Airport, DIA, was constructed outside the city. There was ample cheap flat land that was far removed from residential neighborhoods. Regarding the runway shape, while some claim it resembles a swastika, the layout is actually designed for operational efficiency, allowing planes to land from any direction based on weather conditions. As for the barbed wire, the notion that it's meant to keep people in is often exaggerated and misunderstood. In reality, the barbs are oriented vertically, meaning they don't specifically face outward or inward. The discussions surrounding the New World Airport Commission often lead to claims that it never existed. However, it was indeed a temporary committee created to organize the airport's opening ceremony. While the name may have raised eyebrows, it served a particular purpose at that time. The Masonic symbol on the capstone exists because the Masons contributed funds for its placement. While there are various theories about their intentions, it's important to recognize that Masons are generally known for their philanthropic efforts. As for the AUAG symbol, while some interpret it as representing the Australia antigen, it's fundamentally a reference to gold and silver, honoring the region's mining history. The Australia antigen is a protein that indicates the presence of hepatitis B. Although hepatitis B can be serious, it has a high survival rate, and exposure to just the antigen itself wouldn't harm anyone. In fact, the discovery of the antigen played a role in developing the hepatitis B vaccine, which earned the discovering doctor a Nobel Prize. Regarding the airport's murals, they were indeed controversial. The artist aimed to celebrate his Chicano heritage and convey a message of peace, but unfortunately, the execution left much to be desired, leading to their removal and storage. The artworks, including the horse and gargoyles, were created by local artists without specific direction from airport administrators. It's unlikely they were intended to hint at anything nefarious, though the overall aesthetic choices could certainly be critiqued. The sprinklers in the tunnels serve a practical purpose related to fire safety. While concrete itself doesn't burn, the materials stored in those tunnels could pose fire hazards, hence the installation. As for the five buried buildings, there's a lack of concrete evidence of their existence, which leaves room for speculation. While I can't confirm their presence, the mystery surrounding them certainly adds an intriguing layer to the narrative. Ultimately, the combination of these elements contributes to the rich tapestry of conspiracy theories surrounding Denver International Airport, whether they hold any truth or not. It's this blend of fact, speculation, and the unknown that makes the story so compelling. Regarding Phil Schneider, it's true that he passed away under mysterious circumstances, but it's also important to acknowledge that he was reportedly struggling with mental health issues, which may have influenced the validity of some of his claims. While it's not accurate to dismiss everything he said as a lie, 
it does raise questions about the credibility of his assertions. When someone is found to have fabricated portions of their story, it naturally leads to skepticism about their entire narrative. His death was indeed unusual, and while we can't definitively confirm the existence of secret tunnels beneath the airport, it's worth noting that their possibility cannot be entirely ruled out. In the event of a nuclear war or other disasters, the president is typically relocated to secure bunkers as part of continuity of government COG, protocols. Notable locations for such facilities include Mount Weather in Virginia on the East Coast and Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado, which is situated about 100 miles south of Denver International Airport. Interestingly, during the 2011 incident involving Comet Alanin, despite it being confirmed that the comet would miss Earth, the president was reportedly taken to a facility that was not Cheyenne Mountain, but rather to Denver Airport, raising eyebrows about the airport's significance in emergency protocols. Researching the conspiracy theories surrounding Denver International Airport can be frustrating, primarily due to the tone with which the information is often presented. Many sources dismiss these theories outright, labeling those who believe in them as kooks. This condescending attitude can alienate those genuinely interested in exploring the mysteries of the airport. In a somewhat mocking response to the conspiracy theories, the airport has taken to putting up humorous signs while conducting work inside the facility. These signs feature whimsical depictions of lizard people, aliens, and memes about tinfoil hats, joking about building gargoyle breeding grounds and preparing for the apocalypse. They even installed a talking gargoyle that delivers one-liners, further trivializing the serious discussions surrounding the airport's enigmatic features. That's a little too close for comfort, lady. Oh, oh damn. Um... What, you never seen a talking gargoyle before? Welcome to Illuminati headquarters. I mean, Denver International Airport. <laughs> this is awesome. Hello. Do I know you? Are you hungry? Oh, I'm starving. You got anything for me? Those flowers look delicious. Oh, my God. Oh, it's because of the conspiracy. Oh, it's because of the conspiracy. Look at me. I'm a little know-it-all. Will you get back over here? I got a question about this conspiracy. Did you have to buy an extra seat for your hat, sir? Sir, are you stealing a desk? Sir, you have resting, confused face. Do you have a favorite animal or pet? A caterpillar. A caterpillar? Wouldn't you rather have a gargoyle? No! Yes! You know, you can actually put the phone down and have a conversation with me. But no, I'm a millennial. I've got to post it. I've got to snap face it and Twitter book it. <laughs> Excuse me, miss, I've got a stain that needs some polishing. Can I borrow your cleaning cart? Oh, no! Yeah. I need your help! Guess what my favorite food is. What? While the airport's playful approach might be entertaining to some, it also serves to obscure the legitimate questions and concerns raised by those who are intrigued by the myriad of theories surrounding the site. The juxtaposition of humor and the dark undercurrents of conspiracy creates a complex narrative that continues to captivate the public's imagination. The recurring question regarding the underground areas and tunnels of Denver International Airport often receives a uniform response whether from official sources, fact-checking platforms like Snopes, or various YouTubers. There's no way anyone could be down there without being noticed. They argue that since thousands of people work at the airport daily, any unusual activity would surely come to light. However, critics of this perspective often point to examples like the Greenbrier Hotel, located about five hours from Washington, D.C. This upscale resort has hosted 26 U.S. presidents and numerous European royals. During renovations in the 1950s, the U.S. government seized the opportunity to construct a massive bunker beneath the hotel without drawing public attention. This wasn't just a small safe room. It was a sprawling 112,000-square-foot facility complete with 25-ton blast doors, a power plant, a cafeteria, a hospital with laboratories and a pharmacy capable of accommodating 1,100 people. For three decades, the existence of this bunker remained a secret 
even from hotel staff. In 1992, the Washington Post revealed the bunker's existence, and by 1995, the government ceased using it. Coincidentally, the same year that Denver International Airport officially opened. The Greenbrier Bunker had operational staff working there the entire time, hidden in plain sight, with some sections not even being underground, all while situated in a busy hotel environment. Considering the vastness of the area beneath Denver Airport, equipped with emergency phones for those who might get lost, it's naive to assume that a secret government project couldn't evade detection. This dismissive attitude towards the possibility of hidden operations is not only arrogant but can also be frustrating for those who take such theories seriously. As we've seen in recent years, the persistence of certain conspiracies often suggests that there may be truths hidden behind the facade. While some conspiracies have indeed turned out to be true, discussing these topics can still be contentious, particularly on mainstream platforms. However, there are spaces online where fringe topics can be explored more freely. I encourage you to engage in these discussions with friends, neighbors, family, and colleagues. If they respond condescendingly, remember that it often stems from a place of being misinformed or brainwashed by the prevailing narratives. Thank you for joining me today to explore these intriguing topics. The conversation around conspiracy theories and the mysteries of places like Denver International Airport is far from over, and it's essential to keep questioning and discussing what lies beneath the surface. If you enjoyed this discussion or learned something new, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. Your support truly makes a difference. Today's topic was inspired by your recommendations. Thousands of you have shown interest in this subject. If there's a particular story or topic you'd like us to explore further, feel free to drop it in the comments below. We couldn't do this without your engagement and enthusiasm. Until next time, remember to be safe, be kind, and know that your contributions are genuinely appreciated.